I've got power tools from Makita, Milwaukee to the world, Vestal, Bosch, any big name you can think of, I've probably got power tools from them. I've probably spent way too much money on power tools, especially since I've got this channel and review a lot of tools. I'm addicted to buying the best tools out there and having a good idea of what brand makes the best tools. I'm probably at the point now where I've used everything multiple times, seen how tools last over time, and I'm going to jump in today with which tool brand I think is best for carpentry. It's a perfect time to make this video now. I just came back from Christmas holidays and that means I've emptied out my ute with all my tools. Most of the tools I use every day are in this room now, but what's going to be more interesting is the tools that aren't in this room. We'll head to my shed outside and in that shed, is all the tools that I used to use and I've retired them and replaced them with new tools. We'll go over every single reason why I have replaced certain tools in there and then after that we'll jump in here and have a look at the tools that I do recommend and the tools that I do use every day as a carpenter. For starters, if anyone is selling or renting a shed in the Mornington Peninsula, please let me know. This place is way too small for everything I've got. I've got a lot of broken old tools in here, especially in those black containers down there. We're not going to jump into those. The main thing I want to jump into are these Milwaukee tools here. That's oh, just a broken Bostitch coil gun. Actually, this store here is the first ever power tool that I bought for carpentry. It's a big 235mm blade. And I bought this while we're doing frames. We're framing with 90 by 35 timber and that big saw could cut through two plates at once. And this is the second tool I bought shortly afterwards. Just a regular size, 185mm blade. And that's just what I use for everyday work, cutting timber. They're both great saws, I do pull them out occasionally. They're only in here because you've, oh, you never see corded saws anymore on a site. I'm tempted to bring it back for a few reasons that we'll get to later. But the one thing I do want to be talking about are these Milwaukee tools. Everyone knows how much hype Milwaukee has, and I found that hype, and I saw that hype too when I started my apprenticeship. And that's why I went out and bought myself a Milwaukee combo kit. Now these are all 18 volt. I think Milwaukee still only do the 18 volt tools anyway. This is what's left of the kit. We can see I've got the grinder, I've got a resip, a drill, and just a little torch in there. Now I had my impact driver stolen and my battery saw broke. They're probably the two main tools I used every day. So it was at that point where I had to replace the Milwaukee kit. And it was also at that point where I decided to leave Milwaukee behind. And I never bought another Milwaukee tool after this. Actually, that's not completely true. I have, I have bought Milwaukee tools since buying this. I bought a combo kit just with a drill on the driver, and that was for a TikTok giveaway that I gave away about a year ago. Even though I say Milwaukee's not good for carpenters purely because of their saws, it's got so many other great tools, such as their drivers and drills. So Milwaukee is perfect for a lot of other trades. Now, most of the carpenters I work with, apart from the blokes that use Milwaukee, will all say that Milwaukee make great tools, some of the best tools. But their mitre saws, circular saws, their saws aren't up to scratch. As a carpenter, a saw is going to be one of the most important tools that you use. When I used Milwaukee's 18 volt saw, I had that at the same time as this corded saw. And I use the Milwaukee saw only on a roof, so if I'm in an awkward place where I don't want to run a lead or a cord, it never had the capacity to completely replace and get rid of the cord or one of these corded saws. It just didn't have the power, it couldn't compete with this. Now, DeWalt's 54 volt range came out, a coworker had one of their saws. And he was actually able to get rid of the corded saw. He didn't need to use it because that DeWalt saw was so good. Now that's the same as Makita's 40 volt saws as well. I've got a corded Makita 40 volt saw and that's also great and you can use that instead of a corded saw. But even comparing the Milwaukee saws to 18 volt saws from Makita or DeWalt or other tools, they're just too bulky, they're too big. You don't have a good line of sight. I've never liked using them and a lot of the co-workers I stand with have the same opinion on the Milwaukee tools. Now one of my mates also had Milwaukee's miter saw. I don't think I ever had a chance to use it. I can't say too much about it, apart from the fact that he had a few problems with it. He had to keep sending it back to get fixed, and eventually they just gave him his money back, and he switched to a Makita 40 volt miter saw instead. Talking about miter saws, we'll jump into this big DeWalt box below it. This is a brand new 54 volt DeWalt miter saw. Now this saw here is a good saw, even though I've got it in my shed and I don't use it. I actually got this one for free. It was a replacement of an old saw I had. I had the old DeWalt miter saw. That one required two 54 volt batteries, but the plus side is you could actually take the batteries off and use it as a corded saw instead. That was awesome to start with, but a very common problem that happened with those, and it happened to me, is when you take the batteries out, the saw holds a little bit of power. And then what happens is if you switch it over to actually use it as a corded saw and plug it into the outlet, that power, get, that power that's already in the saw surges and it blows the inverter. Now my saw broke, it went down this route, I had to drop it off to Sydney Tools and they said it was a very common problem but they took the saw away and I don't think I had it for about three months. In that time I still had to do work so that's when I ran out 
and bought the 40 volt Makita saw. When I went back to City Tools to pick up my saw, they couldn't fix it. They said it wasn't worth fixing. And I got this saw instead. Now this saw is great. I'm a bit annoyed though because I had a saw which was a corded saw and also a battery saw. And they just gave me a purely battery saw. Now it's been good having this saw though because I could compare it and do a review between this saw here and Makita's 40 volt saw. They're both 305 millimeter blades, both big compound miter saws. But now that that review is done, it is sitting in my shed and I just need to find a good home for it to go to. After my Milwaukee kit, that's when I jumped across to DeWalt. It was this 54 volt saw which kind of sold me. If you've used one of these, you know how good the power is. And on top of that, we had the 54 grinder and resip as well. So around me are a lot of those DeWalt battery tools. These aren't actually the ones I bought after that Milwaukee combo kit. I bought a DeWalt combo kit full of DeWalt 54 range tools and about a year later, they all got stolen. One of my most popular videos is actually replacing my DeWalt tools for the second time. And that's when I unboxed six and a half gram worth of DeWalt battery tools and got most of the DeWalt stuff that you see here. Now these DeWalt tools have done great by me. I've used them for a few years and DeWalt are definitely up there for a tool company you should consider if you want a battery range. In saying that though, I've had a few tools from DeWalt break and a lot of my recent purchases have been from different tool brands other than DeWalt. One of the most recent purchases I've had is this Hikoki nail gun. Nail guns have, and I think they'll always be, a very interesting conversation. I think most of the workforce and most people you know are using the Pazo nail guns. I do have my own Pazo laying around here somewhere and they're a great tool but they do have the downside that you need the gas as well to use them and at the moment that is costing an arm and a leg to use. If you're watching this video and you're an apprentice or starting an apprenticeship I definitely recommend getting the Pazo nail gun. You don't need to pay for gas. It's up to your employee to pay for the gas for the gun. So I'd recommend you get a reliable tool, you get a powerful tool, get the Pazo. If you're a subcontractor or a business owner, it becomes a bit of a different discussion. Now Pazos do work really well. They're a powerful gun, but you are paying a lot for the gas and they do break down sometimes as well. I'm kind of going through a phase right now, jumping between different nail guns. I want to use every single one that's out there do a review on them and actually do an ultimate comparison video on all the battery powered nail guns and find out the best one. That's why I've got this Hikoki right now. I'm going through the stage of using this, same as a fixing gun which is around the corner there, because in terms of battery guns right now, I can't clearly say which one I think is the best. So standing out from these DeWalt tools around me though, is we've got a Makita Mitre saw which I mentioned earlier, and also a 185mm Makita 40 volt saw. In my opinion, I think this is a very common opinion and I'd love you to comment down below if you disagree. But if you have the money and you can afford it, I recommend Makita's 40 volt range. They're definitely the best tools out there, but they come with one major downside. And this downside is the only reason I still use my DeWalt tools. And that downside is you have your 40 volt batteries for Makita, and you cannot use these with any of the 18 volt tools. That becomes a bit of a problem if you only have the 40 volt batteries, because they do have great 40 volt tools, but they don't have a huge line of tools that you can use with the 40 volt battery. So if you were gonna build a big tool setup, you'd need to use a 40 volt and then also go out and buy an 18 volt Makita or another battery range as well. That's a great thing about DeWalt. We do have these big powerful 54 volt batteries, but if we have a look at them too, you can see the 18 volt written on the other side. They do work for both your 54 volt tools and then also your 18 volt tools. So you can use those batteries on all of DeWalt's range. A couple of tool brands I mentioned at the start of this video, we haven't really looked at yet, is Festool and then also Bosch tools. I own one of Festool's vacuums and hidden around that corner as well is Festool's track saw. If you're in the industry, you probably know as Festool as being that top tier, really high quality, really premium tool. I wouldn't recommend getting a lot of Festool tools just to use every day. Firstly, they're really expensive, but they are made to be those premium tools that you wanna use for the good jobs. You don't wanna be using Festool as an everyday tool that you might break. You just wanna save it there for the good jobs and make sure it's always calibrated, it's always going to cut straight, everything's going to be perfect on your Festool. That's what I use my Festool tools for, and I think most people are the same. I buy the Festool just for those premium tools, for those premium jobs. For my belief, I don't think Festool are made for an everyday tool that you're going to be slogging around the work site, because you will be pretty rough with your tools if you use them every day. Bosch is another tool I've used a bit of. I had a co-worker who bought the 18 volt range. It does the trick, and the tools have a few cool features in them, but the most important one I'm going to talk about is the saw. It's similar to the Milwaukee saw, it's big, it's bulky, it's hard to see that line where the blade's actually hitting the timber. And that's really important, you want to be able to easily use your tool 
and easily have a line of sight so you can see where that blade is cutting the timber. Now well, earlier this year I've done a review on one of Bosch's bigger grinders and also their oscillating tool. Now these are both tools that I luckily had Bosch send me out for free and they were awesome. That was probably the best battery grinder and oscillating tool that I've ever used. And that's one thing I've got to hand out to Bosch. I think they need work on their saws and their basic tools that you would use every day. But they're odd tools that you don't use every single day. Like the big grinder I did a review for and also the oscillating tool. Bosch do those really well. They're definitely innovative in the tool industry. They're going to come out with a lot of cool tools. But I just don't think they're basic tools. They're everyday tools are up to scratch to compete with Makita and Dewalt yet. Now there are two tools that I don't have here to show you anyway. Since I am lucky and do these videos and in return do get a few free tools, I love to try them out and do a review so I actually know what the tool's like. But then instead of having it sitting in my shed with all those other tools you saw there, I'd rather give it away to a coworker or a friend, someone that needs that tool, someone that's gonna use it. I feel a lot better knowing that these tools handed to me are getting used every day rather than sitting in a shed until I come out to make a video like this. I think this type of video is something a lot of people would have a lot of different opinions on and I'm really interested to read in the comments on everyone's stance on what the best tool brand is and what they would recommend as well and I think this could be a good area too. If you're watching this and wanting to invest in a tool brand, go through the comments because some people might have their stories on why they don't think DeWalt's good and why they don't think Makita's good. If you are torn between Makita and DeWalt, another really good thing to think about before you buy your tools is what is your co-workers using? What tools is your boss using? A lot of the guys I work with have DeWalt and a few of them also have the 40 volt Makita tools. This is great if we're working and a battery dies. Instead of having to straight away go and switch a battery over, walk to wherever the charger is, climb down off the roof, we normally have multiple batteries and multiple tools out so we can just change batteries between each other. And that's another reason why I painted all my batteries too. Just so they don't get confused if a co-worker accidentally puts it in this drill and then forgets about it when we go to go home. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it has helped you out. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be making a lot more carpentry content and have some really cool things planned for 2024.